Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, this one nicknamed Great Green, as we're playing with Karn the Great Creator as one of the centerpieces of the deck. Now why are we so interested in Karn the Great Creator? Well, the main reason is that it allows us to search up a copy of Graph Digger's Cage out of the sideboard, which is especially useful if we don't get to sideboard in a best of one game. And Graph Digger's Cage is a very useful card in standard these days. It stops decks like Geruda, it stops Winota from hitting anything, it stops Lurus from getting back stuff from the graveyard, it stops the Cat Oven combo, it stops Luca from searching up a copy of Agent of Treachery. So plenty of cases where Graph Digger's Cage is a desirable card. Now the reason we're not simply main decking Grav Digger's Cage is that there's still plenty of matchups where Cage doesn't do anything, so instead we're just searching it up with Karn so we can search it up in matchups where it's useful. Now the reason we kind of have to play green is that in a lot of matchups like Geruda and Winota, it is important to get Karn in play as soon as possible so we can minus and get the Cage, because if we wait until turn 4 and then get Cage turn 5 and play it, it might already be too late since those decks often get to do their broken thing on turn 4, so we do need some acceleration to get Karn in play ahead of schedule, so we've got a total of 12 accelerants to help us do that, 4 copies of Arboreal Grazer, 4 Gilded Goose and 4 Paradise Druid, so we can play Karn minus and get the cage in play before the opponent does their broken thing. So that's the main idea behind the deck, and then we kind of rounded out the deck with some other useful green cards, like the Gem Razor to destroy artifacts and enchantments, which is also useful against the Witch's Oven or against Fires of Invention, and also just a nice 4-4 creature to help us uh, protect our Planeswalkers, and then Questing Beast as a nice way to destroy opposing Planeswalkers. So we've got a lot of hate cards in this deck, so let's take a look at the entirety of it. At one mana we've got a Grazer and Gilded Goose to help us ramp, and a total of 26 lands to go with the Grazer to make sure we can always put something in play. Then the full playset of Paradise Druid. Paradise Druid also makes for a nice mutate target for the Gem Racer, as we can potentially have a 4-4 Hexproof creature on defense to protect our Planeswalkers. And then we also have the full playset of Bond of Flourishing to give the deck a bit more consistency since this can help us find a Karn in matchups where we need it or find our Questing Beast if we're facing down a Planeswalker so it can kind of help us smooth out our draws a little bit. And then we've already mentioned the Gem Racer which we can mutate for 3 mana and we've got 12 cheap mutate targets to mutate this onto. And then 4 Questing Beast to take out opposing Planeswalkers. And then the 4 Karn the Great Crater with a nice selection of artifacts to search up out of the sideboard. And we'll go over those in just a second. And then moving up the curve we've got 2 copies of Kogla which can fight a creature when it enters the battlefield. And can also destroy an artifact or enchantment when it attacks. And 2 copies of Ugin as another all-purpose removal spell that can also double up as a win condition. And makes all our colorless spells too cheaper. So helps out with Karn but also with Stonecoil Serpent which is the last card in the main deck. As a nice uh, versatile creature that we can play at any part in the curve and there's also some decks that struggle to deal with this as they only have multicolor interaction or uh, they rely on cards like Elspeth Conquers Death which can't exile the Serpent so just a nice versatile card to round out the deck and then looking at the mana base we've got four copies of Castle Garenbrick which is especially useful at ramping out Kogla or playing a big Stone Cold Serpent 14 forests and then the upside of being a mono green deck is that we get to play a bunch of these colorless utility lands including four copies of blast zone which can help us take out a creature like a flourishing fox without needing to add any counters to it and just gives the deck a bit more removal which it otherwise lacks can also take out a witch's oven and uh, Karn's passive ability also by the way stops witch's oven from being activated so plenty of witch's oven hates in this deck then we've got two copies of Bonders Enclave, which can help us draw some extra cards and no shortage of four-powered creatures to enable it. And then two mobilized districts to go with our Planeswalkers, which can turn into a 3-3 citizen creature with Vigilance until end of turn. And then looking at the sideboard, we've got a nice selection of artifacts to search up with our Karn. We've got Ginger Brute as a nice one-mana creature if we just need to play a one-mana blocker. We've got Gravedigger's Cage, which is the main appeal of Karn. We've got Shadow Spear to give Trample and Lifelink, nice against the aggressive decks. Two copies of Soul Guide Lantern, which also shines against the cycling decks as we get to exile their graveyard to prevent a Zenith Flare from killing us. Two Sorcerer Spyglass to shut down activated ability, mostly for Planeswalkers. And then uh, two Crystal and Giant, which can also be a nice win condition that we get to search up. And then we've got one Godfather Statue. If we manage to ramp it out early, it can slow down the opponent significantly. Two Meter Golem as more removal a Great Henge to draw some extra cards and gain some life, and two additional copies of Stonecoil Serpent to complement the ones in the main deck as another win condition we get to search up. 
So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Don't know what we're up against. No companion. This hand feels a bit too slow on the draw especially. And this is better. And we'll let go of either the district or the blast zone. Probably the districts. Bones got the Jeskai Triome. Incubation. So it could be a Winota deck. In which case we've got the Karn to search up Cage, which is nice. Could bond or I can make food with a goose. So next turn I can play Karn, but of course I won't be able to uh, get Cage in play yet. Yeah, I'll just make a food here. And we'll get Cage. And then the best they can do is end of turn Raise the Alarm into Winota. It's gonna be a Brazen Borrower instead. No Winotas at least. Alright, so do we feel like we need to play Cage? It would be basically my entire turn, I can bond as well. It's probably safer to do so, and then we can still win a fair game with Beasts and Gem Razor. Sure, let's uh, bond first then. Probably take the land. Hogla's nice, sadly no castle to play this turn. So do we just cast Gem Racer to hold off the Brazen Borrower and then next turn I can Kogla hopefully to kill the Giants. Seems like a plan. Well, I guess this could have also just been a Jeskai Fire deck, although who knows, maybe it is still Winota with Kenrith. Luckily drew the land for Kogla. Could be a Deafening Clarion after damage, but that's fine by me. Another stomp. That works too. Alright, Karn, what do you do for me? Can play Karn minus, get something juicy like a uh, Great Hench perhaps? Although I wouldn't be able to play it this turn. But the next turn I can maybe. Get the Hange in play. Yeah, I don't hate it.
Legion War Boss. Alright, so it's more and more pointing towards the Winota deck after all. Yeah, I guess I'll let Karn go so I can get the Henge in play. And we'll start attacking. They could hard cast Agent of Treachery this turn if they have one in hand. Instead it's a race into Winota. Alright, good thing we have a cage in play. Questing Beast doing an excellent job on defense. Yeah, our opponent's about to discover how Graf Digger's Cage interacts with Winota. So I can fire up the mobilized district, attack with everyone. Alright, opponent uh, packs it up. Alright, so Karn getting the cage, definitely useful in this matchup, even though it took a while for them to play the Winota. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, with a pretty decent looking hand, can ramp into Karn if we're up against the Lurus Cycling deck, can get a Lantern if we're up against a Sacrifice deck, we can get a cage, and then Gem Razor can also destroy the Witch's Oven. Serrated Scorpion, so sacrifice confirmed. Next turn, Karn gets Cage and take it from there. And the Witch's Oven. Alright. So all according to plan so far. Let's see if our opponent remembers Karn's passive. They did not. They forgot to use the Witch's Oven in response. But uh, still gonna get the cage and play it here, I think. Or I could hold it. Probably don't need it this turn, actually. And this way, don't f waste the food token. Gutter bones, sure. And a footlight fiends. Can't use a witch's oven. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, that's the effect Karn has against some people. So this is definitely the matchup that kind of exemplifies how good Karn can be in some matchups helping us get the cage, as well as shutting down activated abilities of artifacts. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Kiruga deck, so Fires of Invention. We've got Kogla, which is not the ideal answer to Fires, but it can potentially destroy it if they don't get rid of it before I can attack. I'll try it. This is still a rough matchup, even with all the Gem Razors and Koglas. Questing Beast, definitely pretty useful at taking out those uh, Planeswalkers. So the plan is just to get this Kogla in play as soon as possible. And with Castle into Accelerance, we can get there pretty quickly.
interesting or point on a Grixis version. I guess we'll play the questing beast for now. So this a four color version, Deafening Clarion kills my mana creatures. There's a gem racer to take care of fires next turn. Let's take another Paradise Roots. Alright, so we've got the tools we need here. Hopefully no Shadow Disguise. And there's fires. And just a bone crusher giant. Alright. That we can live with. So I have to decide if I want to play Kogla fight hit for six. Or if I wanna mutate a gem razor to destroy the fires. Playing Kogla has to be better here. If they had Shattered the Sky last turn, they definitely would have played it over the Giants. It's gonna be Elspeth to conquer Kogla. Into Keruga, perhaps, but then we can mute it onto Paradise Druid and still hit them for four. Alright, sweet. I definitely should not have destroyed the Fires of Invention there, because now I gave them the opportunity to still cast a spell in my turn. Like maybe a Brazen Borrower. Should have just destroyed the Conqueror's Death. Alright, luckily didn't get punished. But yeah, out of principle, you gotta destroy the Fires of Invention. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck. So it could be Cycling, but it could also be some sort of Graveyard deck, in which case Karn getting Cage is very useful. Yeah, we'll keep. Alright, so it's the Knight's aggro deck. This could be a tough one. Although the Blast Zone on one can definitely do a lot of work. So we're not going to show it to them unless we have to. Sky Knight Vanguard. Don't mind just having this on defense. Opponent can be playing Amber Cleave, so don't expect too many artifacts or enchantments that I need to kill with the Gem Razor. And now I've got a nice 4 4 hexproof on defense. Still gotta watch out for Black Lance Paragon. So probably won't be blocking the Fervent Champion if they attack with it, but might trade for the Vanguard. Yeah, so this is 100% a Blank Lance Paragon. Think I'll still make this trade. Or I can block the token, which is not a Knight to give it a Death Touch to. But I kind of need him to play the Paragon at some point, since I don't have any great answers for it. And then I can play a 4 4 Stone Coil. So 
So this means they have another Black Lance Paragon, most likely. Probably just forced to block the Knights. Yeah, blocking Fervent Champion just results in me losing Serpents. Find us one instead. Alright. So I don't lose a Serpent at least. I could Karn get Cage to stop Lurus, but we kind of need to deal with the uh, board first before we can worry about Karn. So what do I do? I can Blast Zone to destroy Knight and Champion and then still play Goose. Guess that's the plan. They get to replay Vanguard and attack with the Paragon, which at this point I'm probably just dead. If I trade, I'm desperately behind on board, even if I get Cage. If I take it, I'm just dead next turn. Is there anything I can draw here? Even Kogla probably doesn't save me. But that's probably my best draw here. Gem Razor, not quite. So if I Karn for Cage and play it, I'm just dead on board. So I guess I'll just use Castle. But yeah, I need to get this card in play to stop Lurus from getting value. Otherwise, we're definitely losing a long game. So they probably have another Find Us One in hand. Which I probably can beat, let's see. If we block these two, five, six, seven, I, I'm just dead on board, so that doesn't work. So I'm forced to block here just to stay alive, but then I'm still dead to the pump spell. Well, don't have much of a choice, I guess. And there's a finest one. Alright, GG's. So this is a matchup where Cage would be useful, but just... Playing four mana for Karn and one mana for Cage in an aggressive matchup is kind of asking for trouble since we kind of have to spend every single resource protecting our life total. We're on the play facing a Yorion deck, which this hand has the Questing Beast to finish off on the Annoying Planeswalkers. Don't have the Karn for Cage, which can be useful if you're on the Jeskai version with Luka to search up Agent. I'll try it. Gem Racer can also be useful if they're on the Fires version. So they appear to be on the Jeskai variants. Still just gonna jam the Questing Beasts. The pose to tap it and draw cards, interesting. So maybe... I guess this can make tokens for Luka to sacrifice to get agents, so that makes sense. The fairy bounces the beasts, we'll just replay it. And then... I guess this turn I just wanna... Play this plus Paradise Roots. Oh, 
hardly my worst defeat. And then hopefully find a Karn soon to get Cage in play. Alright, opponent's holding up three mana. Could be like an Omen of the Sun to then play Luka and Minus next turn. So let's see what uh, Bond brings to the table. No Karn, sadly. Probably get a backup Questing Beasts. Alright, and our opponent concedes. About to take 10 damage, so luckily uh, did not get to do their Luka shenanigans onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, not sure what we're up against, but this hand can ramp out a Kogla, so we'll try it. Opponent on Teamer, so probably Teamer Reclamation. One of the few decks that doesn't always uh, have a companion. Next turn, play Questing Beasts. And then we've got the Gem Racer to deal with the Reclamation. There it is. Do I attack first with just a questing beast? Hmm. To maybe bait out some interaction before we mutate the gem raiser. Nah, if they don't have a counter spell, I do want to actually attack. All right, Reclamation down. Feels like a victory. Opponent down to eight. And a Night Pack Ambusher end of turn. That was unexpected, so now we're just hoping for land into Kogla. Opponent just explodes, works for me too. All right, so Gem Racer can not only destroy Fires of Invention, but also Wilderness Reclamation. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Opponents no uh, companions, so don't know what we're up against. But we can ramp out Questing Beast and Ugin. Temple of Triumph. So it could be another Winota deck. Marauding Rapture instead. Alright. I'll keep the Paradise Root untapped. So maybe a Mutate deck. Featuring the Raptor, although can also be played in a Winota deck. Let's play Ugin. And get in for four. Bonecrusher takes out Ugin. 
but now we can start using the Enclave to draw some cards. Wow, Storm's Wrath, that was definitely unexpected. Well, that sets us back to the Stone Ages here. Maybe they top decked it, given that they bothered using the Giant on Ugin. Otherwise, uh, this would have just killed it. And another Raptor. Well, I guess I'll put a Blast Zone up to two here. Questing Beasts, not bad. Take four. And then I don't really want to trade given that we can use our lands to draw some cards. Perforos's intervention kills the beasts. It's unfortunate. And now we're kind of on empty. I'll take another four, but next turn I'll probably chum block. At least her opponent's also kind of on empty here, maybe holding some removal. I see the capture door. That's a cool combo with the uh, Marauding Raptor. And with the... Uh, Storm's Wrath, so that explains their entire deck. Blast Zone comes a little late, so I'm probably dead here. Yep, Storm's Wrath. At least it kills a giant, so it just puts four counters on the Caprador. So I'm still not dead, unless they have another one. Deafening Clarion will do it too. All right. Alright, so we got to see a bit of a great green in action. Overall, the deck's not amazing, but uh, Cage is definitely a pretty well-positioned card. So maybe there's other ways to somehow sneak Cage into the main deck and maybe have ways of discarding it in matchups where we don't need it. So alongside Cathartic Reunion. But uh, that's maybe for another deck. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.